In this video, I'm going to solve a problem from Putnam 1989. Here is a sequence of numbers. The digits of all numbers in this sequence are alternating ones and zeros, with both the first digit and the last digit to be one. It goes like 101, 101, and so on. The question is, which of these numbers are prime numbers? Before we move on, don't forget to give a like, subscribe to my channel, and turn on post notifications. To help visualize the pattern, I listed out some of the first few numbers of the sequence in a column. So you may notice that when I, whenever I go to the next number, I'm just adding an extra 0, 1 at the right end of the previous number. So notice that for the first number, the third number, the fifth number, and so on, the oddth number in the sequence, the oddth term, they are all multiples of 101. Because I can group the ones and zeros in this way. 101, and then there is a zero in the middle, and then again 101, and then another, another zero in the middle, and then 101. The pattern is that for the oddth terms of the sequence, there are even number of ones. So I can group two of them in together and then together with the zero in the in between those two ones. And so we'll get a bunch of 101s. So that means for odd term, they are all multiples of 100. And one. Now when it comes to the even terms, which means these numbers. Now these numbers are slightly more complicated. Let me take the second term as an example. Ten thousand hundred and one. If I write this number in base ten expanded form. 10,101 is actually equal to 10 to the power 4 plus 10 to the power 2 plus 1, which is 10 to the power 0, or about, but I'll just put 1 here. For this, I'm going to consider a polynomial. Which is x to the 4 plus x squared plus 1. To determine whether it's prime or not, we have to try to factorize this kind of polynomials. The way to do this is to add an extra x squared at the end. Of course, we'll subtract them x squared as well, so to balance the equation. But I'm going to take the first four terms together. Now I'm going to factorize the yellow group and it's actually equal to x squared plus 1 all squared and subtracted by x squared. And this is x squared plus x plus 1 times x squared minus x plus 1 by the identity of the difference of squares. So in fact, even there are only odd numbers of 1s, not even, we can s there is still a chance for that to be not prime, as long as we know how to factorize them. So let's see what will happen for the general case. Now in general, those numbers are of the form 1 plus 10 squared plus 10 to the power 4, I'll add a word 4 for these kind of numbers, all the way up to now it depends on what powers of 10 we are getting to. If there are odd numbers of odd numbers of ones, say if I scroll back up to our fourth and the sixth term, we're actually having for this 10 to the power of 8, and for the sixth term, I'm adding four extra digits. So the highest power is actually 10 to the power 12, 
Let me write this down. 10 to the power 4, 10 to the power 8, 10 to the power 12, and so on. The pattern is that the index is a multiple of 4. So I'm going to say it's all the way up to 10 to the power, say, 4n. And now I'm going to try to factorize this expression. So in fact, using the finite geometric series, we know that this is equal to 10 to the power of 4n plus 2 minus 1, all divided by 10 squared minus 1. Now from this, I can say that I can factorize both the numerator and denominator by the identity of different squares again, and say that it's actually 10 to the power 2n plus 1, plus 1 or minus 1, and we multiply them together. And for the denominator, it's exactly, it will become 10 plus 1 times 10 minus 1. Now, at this point, I'm going to split the fraction in this way, with a red line. So I can say that this fraction is the product of the yellow part and the green part. And both yellow and green are actually integers. Say for the yellow, it's actually 10 to the power 2n minus 10 to the power 2n minus 1 plus 10 to the power 2n minus 2 all the way down to plus 1. This is what will happen if I do long division on the yellow fraction. While well, for the green fraction, it's multiplied by 10 to the 2n plus 10 to the power 2n minus 1 plus 10 to the power 2n minus 2 all the way down to plus 1. And it's again an integer. As long as n is a natural number, which means some positive integer. So that means from these from this part of work, we've managed to show that if that number consists of odd numbers of ones, and it's not prime, or I should say at the top, is even term of the sequence. Does that mean that all numbers in the entire sequence are not prime numbers? The answer is no, because if we go back to our first part of our work, we know that the odd terms, the terms labeled in red, are all multiples of 101. But for the first term, it's exactly 101. And we know that this is still a prime, even if it's a multiple of 101, because it just divides 1 and the number itself. So that means the only prime is 101. And this is our final answer.